Hello and welcome to Legislative Report. I'm State Representative Mario Scavello. And I'm State Representative Rosemary Brown. We are here today at DES, Developmental Education Services of Monroe County. And we have Gary Roberts with us, who is the Vice President of the Board of Directors, and Sue Folk, who is the Executive Director. Thank you. Welcome and thank you for having us here today. Happy to be here. So I think we should probably start the program for people who are watching to um, understand what DES, what it is, and what mm -hmm. you actually do for our community. So I don't know who wants to to take the lead on that. Sue, do you want to start with that? Uh, actually, I'm going to let Gary. Gary is a charter board member. Um, when uh, Cerebral Palsy, United Cerebral Palsy, was up here providing the services and could no longer do it, they were going to pull out, a, pull the services out of the county. Um, grassroots effort, board of directors uh, came together, and that's where Gary stepped in and stepped up as a volunteer. So. Wow. You can give us the history. That was pretty much my history. <laughs> You're the we hero. Did, well, and we did say before we, we started today, <coughs> 1982. Actually, we started a little before. Yeah, in 82. With Gary's. Uh, with, with me, Jim D'Angelo, uh, Attorney John Dunn. Uh, we, when, as Sue mentioned, the United Cerebral Palsy was going to discontinue services to Monroe County and Pike County, which was uh, became... CDD or Center for Devel Developmental Disabilities mm -hmm. back in those days and we had many long meetings with the members of UCP and I through a palsy they came up and sat with us we created a, a set of bylaws and uh, operating procedures and everything else it took us several weeks of meetings to do that and uh, then we incorporated CDD which covered both Monroe and Pike counties as our own organization and we set up our own board of directors and we hired uh, um, people to run the program for us and that was in 82 and in 83 I think we actually opened our doors and started providing uh, services to the developmentally challenged infants and adults uh, in the two counties I mentioned. Uh, this continued uh, up through 1992 uh, when Pike County and Monroe County split and Pike County formed their own organization mm -hmm. and Monroe County uh, took over and we re retained the name of CDD and I think Pike County still has the name CDD. They do. They we, do. Yeah, we yeah. retained the original charter um, but felt at this point when we were looking at the agency a name change to reflect a more positive community-based um, uh, service delivery model. So that's where Developmental Education Services of Monroe County came in. We wanted to get away from the word center and, and really focus on getting our, ourselves out into the community and getting our clients into the community. And it's a much more positive way of expressing who we are and what we do and what services <coughs> we provide. And uh, 1992 was a banner year. We hired Miss Sue Folk as our executive director. It's only been 20 years now, huh? Almost. <laughs> yeah. Almost. And, uh, wow. She's done an outstanding job for us. I, I must say, add that. I don't know why. But uh, <laughs> we uh, we went through oh, the adult program. As I can recall, one, two, three, four, five, six different uh, physical plants that we used: the United Methodist Church an old building down on 2nd Street, the Bowen Alley, behind the Bowen Alley up on North 9th Street mm -hmm. for a while, and a couple others. And the goal of the organization was always to have our own facility, which is what we're sitting in now that we just opened three months ago? August 1st. August, August we opened up in our own facility, which again was a, a dream to combine the administrative offices and the adult program here. Back in the early days, we had a, uh, <coughs> excuse me, the, the early intervention program was also a center-based program where the parents would bring their children to the program and we had teachers and therapists here to do that. Uh, since that time, it's now a home-based program where we send our therapists and uh, so on out to the, the homes to service the children. The adult program has continued as it, as it is here. And six years ago, we yes. start... Hmm? Mm -hmm. Six years no, ago, ten, actually. ten years been that long. Jeez, yes, it's getting old. The uh, we uh, opened up a, a program out in the West End mm -hmm. and uh, got a, a, a facility out there, which is um, again an excellent facility uh, behind Grant Homes, and uh, they're doing very well also out there. We have 
I think over almost 60 adult clients now that we serve. We have 20, 20, uh, 20 out at the West okay. End and 42, 42. here mm -hmm. at the center. And how many, how many children do we have now? Um, this year we've served 35 families so far. 35 um, families. Yeah. With physical therapy, speech therapy, and developmental education services. And just a, an added note is the, our program and similar programs handle children from birth to three. And then at three years old, it becomes the responsibility of the school districts. Mm -hmm. And they carry through until they're 21. And then after they're 21, they come back into a program like ours. And uh, so that's pretty much the history of what we've done. Did I leave mm -hmm. anything out? <clears throat> no, just that uh, we are the largest provider of adult day services here in Monroe County. Um, and we're, we're very proud of the fact that we've kept up with all of the initiatives, um, not only by the state, but by, by best practices. Mm -hmm. um, we are out in the community, um, not just uh, with community-based activities like bowling, learning to use the movie theaters, giving them skills to become independent. That's, that's um, we also have quite a, a broad-based volunteer component to the program. Um, meals on Wheels. We deliver meals to Westgate Apartments, Shirley Futch, Whitestone one time a week. We've in the past volunteered with Awesome Salvation Army, Scoot Soup Kitchen, the Top, Gap, Top Gaps Art Institute, um, as well as the Park Service from uh, May through September, we uh, have for 20 years gone to Hidden Lake and Hialeah Park to help maintain the parks um, for everyone's use. So we want, wow. we want to showcase the abilities of the individuals that come to our program. We also, in collaboration with the Kiwanis Club of the Stroudsburgs, have a, uh, an action club, the Kiwanis Action Club, and it's for adults with disabilities and we do community service. And you might have seen our picture in the paper just recently. We donated $700 to various charities, local charities. Um, nice. We do our fundraising through a wee bowling tournament that they all enjoy doing. Um, and they make the decisions as to where the money goes. And, and it's <clears throat> very touching because they have connections out in the community. Yeah. So when they want to give to the Red Cross, usually there's one of our members has a story to tell how the Red Cross helped them. Or awesome, mm -hmm. you know, they, they have pets or they've seen strays. And um, <clears throat> so we're, we're, we are about giving back to the community and being a very integrated part of the community. You know, something you, as you said it, you know, it, it just hit home with me, 62 adults. Mm -hmm. You have here? So that's 62 families that can actually go out to work because you're here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because if not, they'd have to stay home and, and, and watch the, yes. right? So Correct. I, yeah. Yeah. I wanna, I'm sorry, Sue. No, I was just going to say that it's not just 62 lives that we touch. Yeah. You know, the, the the, when you add in the family members, especially exactly. the little ones, um, when we go into the homes of 35 little ones, we're touching their siblings, their parents, their grandparents. If they have um, another caregiver, babysitter that comes in, we're touching their lives too. Yeah. One of the important things in the history of the organization that I, I forgot <laughs> was our recycling program. Back in the year 2000, uh, DES partners with communities, um, community partners, partners in, in recycling, yeah. and uh, we have we created that to give our adults again another avenue to go out and learn and, and pr be productive and uh, learn a skill, hopefully. And uh, it's grown meets and bounds, and just it's a tremendous thing. We do shredding of take a major uh, organization in the county. We do take all their excess paperwork and we shred that. Uh, we collect metals from uh, shops and places that don't have anywhere to just, we take those. Mm -hmm. uh, we, uh, I know they come to my little bitty office and once a week and pick up all my uh, excess paper and uh, bring, it at, bring it home and they bundle up and they can sell all this. And, and uh, they've been financially very successful and helped us probably we would not be sitting in our new facility, which I mentioned a little while ago, had it not been for uh, the CPR. 
a and program. And so community partners in recycling actually employs 16 individuals with disabilities. Wow. That's and nice. um, it's enabled uh, 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 at least two individuals to move out of a group home and get an apartment and become more independent in their living. Um, a, a few individuals have actually used it as a stepping stone get their feet wet in, in working in the, in the real world, you know, working out in the community and have been able to get full-time jobs in the community without any support. Um, and it's just been a marvelous, marvelous um, program. And, and again, for 16 individuals getting a paycheck every two weeks and for their work, they're very proud of that. Very, very important point is when, the, when our clients go and work, they get paid. And oh, it's a, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's a great story. Yeah. Thank you. It really is a great story. To, to, and you're creating the, giving the opportunities out there that would normally have not been there. Right. And uh, especially, you do a lot of paper recycling, I know, <coughs> cardboard especially. Mm -hmm. That cardboard market, I know, that fluctuates back and oh, forth. Right. But, but it, it's, um, again, it, it, gives, it puts a lot of people to work. It's a win-win mm -hmm. for everybody. Yeah. It's good it for is. the environment. It's good for... Yeah. Well, and we also, I mean, we, we submit our tonnage so that um, the, the tax credits, the tax breaks that are available to the municipalities can come back to them um, through the recycling programs that the state has. So, you know, we try to partner um, and, and uh, make it a win-win, like you yeah, said, Rosemary. I was looking at the list of your board members. You've got some who's who here. You've got good people <laughs> here in the community that are really, that, mm. that are, you know, that are with you, and it just goes to show you the what they think of DES, Developmental mm -hmm. Educational Services, and by them putting your name there, um, and you, my gosh, from the beginning. I think I was born mm -hmm. 30 years, 30 years. Yeah, that's <laughs> about the time I was born that you started. Well, it's time Rosemary was born. I'm not too sure about you. <laughs> I keep saying, I wish I was born then. <laughs> well, but you yeah. know, you, you see the hard work, mm -hmm. and you see where it started, and one, you see One of the things we did not mention, time. I don't know, we're running short on time, but the absolute dedication of our teachers, our staff, is just outstanding. Uh, we have got to the point where we're paying a comparable wage, but for many, many, many years, we were substandard in salaries and working conditions and benefits, but uh, as we have grown and become more successful, we, we've been able to uh, move, move ahead of that. And, uh, but again, the, the hard work those people do uh, is just, I could not do it. I mean, it's just an outstanding thing. Our staff is very, very dedicated, and and I know, you know, this day and age, it's it's very difficult to make it on one salary. So we do have a number of staff that have second jobs, um, and we haven't been able to provide raises in the last three years. Um, government funding is flat, you know. Uh, so we. That speaks to their dedication. That speaks to their their heart and their caring and and their support of the agency. And and there's certainly certainly the families are just so appreciative. Yeah. You know, you, you mentioned the government funding part. We we really um, the day Corbett got elected it was sworn in. We were 4.1 billion short. That's what our shortfall was, mm -hmm. which is a tremendous hole in the budget that, you know, you just can't raise taxes in this economy. So he really had a tough time to just balance the budget without raising taxes. And unfortunately, there were no increases. There were some cuts. But those, it's, it's either that or raise taxes. And at, at, this, mm -hmm. at this time, I don't think it was the right thing to do. But I think as our revenue starts to come back, Mm -hmm. uh, then we, you know, the programs that I want to see taken care of, the programs to help the people that need the help. Right. And what, you, the, what you're providing here is one of those programs that should get right. fully funded, hopefully, down the road. Thank you. It's one of the programs similar to Salvation Army or PATH or, you know, that we're giving a hand up. It's, yeah. it, you know, money to us is not a hand out. It's a hand up. Um, definitely the skills and the abilities of our clients are enhanced greatly. And the investment that's made here, it shows, you know, by the job opportunities that you create and, and, mm -hmm. and, the, and then some that are able to go onto the market on their own and find, find work because of what they learned right. and the experiences here. Right. Oh, and the other part, too, is, you know, at the younger age, which was the home services that you provide the earlier mm -hmm. that you help those children at a younger age, <coughs> the better off for real-world life skills and, and enjoying true. life and having jobs, like you said, in the future. So <laughs> that's a really important service that you do 
which is good for the home care for younger children. Right. Um, you know, a child's brain is developing so fast in the first years of life. We all know that. We all know that there's windows of opportunities for children to learn things. If those windows aren't met, then later on problems arise. More services are needed in the school districts, more costly services. So early intervention is, is a cost-effective right thing to do. Um, and this was 10 years ago for every um, dollar spent in early intervention, it was a savings of $4 in special education in the school districts. So you can see that, yeah. you know, I'm sure, you Just know, that's... Yeah. the individual do so much better. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, mm -hmm. our first segment, we, we had the vice president and the fellow that's been here from the beginning, and we, we really truly appreciate uh, you giving me the opportunity to come down here and, and Representative Brown to, uh, to speak with you. and. Um, and hopefully, this just three months ago when I, I what's it? You said August. Um, I thought we the opened opening, this. Yeah. Well, we came in there after you were open. <laughs> Correct. Right? We For the open house. Yep. It was about that open house, mm -hmm. and I was just totally amazed from from the one location how you were able to to put this together. And I know it's a generous community and. Hopefully the community continue to be generous. Thank you very much for taking the time, and uh, you've been watching Legislative Report. We'll be back in a moment. Did you know that the main entrance to the Pennsylvania State Capitol building is home of two bronze doors that each weigh over one ton? As the primary entrance to this beautiful architectural building, the bronze doors signify the many accomplishments and sacrifices endured throughout the history of the Commonwealth. The magnificent archway over top the doors contains a portrait of William Penn, founder of the Keystone State. The upper panels on the doors commemorate the forming of our nation with the signing of the Declaration of Independence and Constitution. The bottom panels depict the laborious industries of the Commonwealth, including coal mining and agriculture. Now you know. Welcome back to Legislative Report. I'm State Representative Rosemary Brown, and I'm here with Representative Mario Scavello, and we are now joined by Jim Ferrari, President of the board of DES and also Susan Folk, still back from executive director of DES. So we're returning back to our conversation <coughs> yeah. that we were having about the history of uh, DES and all the wonderful things that they provide to the community. So we're trying to figure out here, and we know you have a lot of background. Yeah, let me, um, let me, if you don't mind, I, I, I want to go a little bit onto that. Background he was waiting because, for this. No, it be, only because he was I know, I know Jim a long, long time. You know, he's probably one of the, he is one of the better attorneys in the county, very busy attorney. And to find the time, and you know that he really believes in what you do here and, yeah. and what happens here for him to donate his time and his name uh, to, the, to the community. And I know, I go back with Jim back in the early 90s, actually it might have been the late 80s, and he said, who is that guy from New York? Because mm -hmm. I used to go to some of the borough meetings. Is the attorney, he's, he's the solicitor for the borough of Mount Pocono since, since the late 80s, correct? That's correct. Yeah, yeah so a long, long time. And now mm -hmm. he's the, the alternate solicitor for the county? That's correct. And I believe you do, do something else you do at the, the prison um, board? Do the, the prison board for mm -hmm. uh, Monroe County and mm -hmm. some other municipal work as well. Yeah, so you have a full plate and uh, to take the time to, to help, it, it really, it tells something about your character, well, the fact that you you know, because this is a, an organization that really does some good things here. Well, thank you very much for those uh, nice words. I have been on the board, I believe I came on the board in the early 1990s, and uh, I've been president, I think, for, for <laughs> probably <laughs> 15 or so years I've been president. And uh, early on in my tenure, I, I developed a special interest in trying to find a permanent home for the agency. And how that came about was that the, the agency, when I became uh, first on the board, was in a uh, building down on Lower Main Street in Stroudsburg. They had all kinds of difficulties with the physical plant, and the mm -hmm. heat didn't work right. The, the carpet was coming up off the floor, the roof leaked. So I interested the board at that time in, in beginning a search for a property for us to purchase so we'd have a permanent home so we wouldn't have problems with, with dealing with landlords and. Mm -hmm. uh, all those types of issues that you have when you rent a property. And um, we engaged in a search that lasted a lot longer than any of us really wanted to, to have mm -hmm. it last. 
Uh, we went up a lot of blind alleys, and as you probably know, for, for a program like this, I mean, there's, there is a uh, uh, zoning issues that you have to satisfy, right. and there's, that really constricts the, the amount of property that's available. And then we looked during the, the real estate boom years in the county where we were com competing with commercial uses for the same property. So we, we had some, as, as I said, we had some blind alleys, but we did uh, luckily uh, happen upon the property that we're sitting in now, which as I'm sure you know, is longtime Monroe County residents. This was Sebring's powerhouse. I remember bringing my lawnmower here to get fixed and buying lawnmowers here uh, many times. And uh, when we, we purchased it, it had been closed. It was no longer in operation and uh, we we, we uh, did uh, renovations, substantial renovations. We, we were fortunate enough to get uh, some very uh, nice donations from members of the community. And we moved in here this past summer and we're absolutely delighted to be here. A a exceptional plant, a beautiful, beautiful, and, and in a great area too, because the, especially young, the young clients, they can go outside and, right, and during the daytime, a nice day, the, oh. you have the parks over here. Mm -hmm. So that your location is just spectacular. Stroud Township has been wonderful <coughs> with us, working with us, and, and um, you know, they have no problem with our use of the fields, mm -hmm. um, and, uh, and then during Little League tournaments or whatever, we share our parking. It's, it's you know, it's a very, very uh, uh, congenial type of relationship, mm -hmm. and, and we're very privileged to be here in Stroud Township. You know, I, I was looking at the districts, you know, the district line, hers and uh, Representative Brown and myself. Do you know that I think it cuts right in the middle of this? <laughs> it does. It, is. it literally is yeah. right here. It, it is right here. Actually, it goes right in between the chairs. <laughs> that thing, that's why we have Representative Brown on this side. Yeah. You know, if you saw the, 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 the way the line is cut, it's it's unbelievable. It's, yeah. Like you, yeah. you you could either vote at the at the Wesleyan Church for me, mm -hmm. or you're voting at so the municipal. So they get two room. for one. They're getting yeah. two for one. Yeah. That's it. But but the whole thing is you service the whole county and with, we do. In, at the West we End do. and and everything else, but. The, it's it's so great to see that you that you've grown to this to this level. Actually, the West End facility um, is out um, right before Broadheadsville, mm -hmm. and and that was begun probably what did we say? Um, yeah, fifteen years ago 15, or 90, so. Yeah. But that was actually eleven individuals coming out of a state institution. Wow. Um, that uh, the the initiative was to to get yeah. individuals who were, you know either misdiagnosed, mis you know, just put into an institution that could really be blossoming out in the community. So um, we, we won the RFP with Carbon Monroe Pike and um, we set up that center out there to specifically accommodate 11 individuals, which it, they were re-entering the community. Yeah. So yeah. we needed to have some specialized support, some, you know, um, some nursing, uh, nursing kind of staff, and and yeah. and initially, I di I didn't know that you had that facility mm -hmm. down there in the West mm -hmm. End, and I actually was um, informed from constituents of mine that had a great experience with with two of their children down in the West End. Wonderful. So um, with all good reviews and how wonderful it was to have mm -hmm. that down in the West End. My district goes down that way. Okay. So um, that's great, great to hear. And they, they have some very challenging individuals, um, physically challenging. Um, they have feeding tubes or peg tubes, um, and so that requires uh, some level of nursing care, really, and observation. And I have to say our staff down there, a wonderful job with it, wonderful with it. Well, and I, and I think, you know, you sometimes maybe you don't always think of this side of it, but the, the respite type of care for, for mm -hmm. the family mm -hmm. to have on that type of a patient that they mm -hmm. care so much about, but they do need that break, right. and they do need that help sure. and that assistance, and, and that really plays such a big role yeah. in some of the services you provide too, because you know the families love and, and they want to take care, but they also need a, a break mm -hmm. to take uh, care of themselves a little. It's a great point, and you know, on top of that, uh, uh, <coughs> the, the fact is some of them would need to go to work, mm -hmm. and if 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 they didn't have a place for their family member to be at. They have to stay home, so it, it takes away from the family income as well. 
So it not only gives them that break, but it also gives them, allows them the opportunity to be employed in the community. Mm -hmm. it, and the families really develop a, a strong relationship with the staff um, mm -hmm. and trust them implicitly to the point where when they need to have respite outside of the program, whether for a weekend they have to go away or for an evening they have to go out, they will contact our staff and hire them to come in and do the respite in the home because they've developed that bond wow. and that trust. So that's, and I think that's a wonderful, wonderful opportunity for the parents to, to oh feel gosh, comfortable yes. in, in being able to do that. And not only that, but their 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 children and their 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 they they know who's going to be there. It's right. not a brand new face that you're bringing into the house. Correct. So it's someone that they're accustomed to, not just the mm -hmm. family, but also the client, right? Right. And I think you know you've done such a great job in the history and how much you've grown it. Is there a next stage, or you know, as you had your vision years ago? with Main Street, you know, is there a next we're, stage that you would say well, you'd love we're to actu We're actually still in this stage because right. we, although we're in this building, we haven't paid for it. Um, we have a mortgage, we have a couple mortgages, and so we're still keenly involved in fundraising because it's our dream to not have a mortgage, not have to pay a mortgage. Um, and hopefully that, we, we have an ongoing fundraising efforts. We have, I don't know if it's been mentioned uh, by uh, Gary Roberts when he was here, but we have a... He said he was going to leave that for you. Okay. The fundraising. The, uh, we have a event that, that is uh, uh, scheduled now for March. What's the date? March 23rd. March 23rd. We need to stay away from the October date. Yeah, because we're oh, getting bad weather definitely. in October, right? We had a, we had <laughs> no a, more snow. There was for uh, Shawnee, the, it's called the Gatsby Gala. Nice. It's a, a 19, uh, Roaring Twenties themed uh party and um, it was scheduled for the end of October and we had a snowstorm and uh, we had to cancel it and now it's rescheduled and we're, we're hoping that that's sort of our future fundraiser. We, we're, we're always reaching out to members of the community to help us out financially. We have gotten some really generous donations particularly, if I don't want to single anybody out, but particularly from the Hughes Foundation. The Hughes mm -hmm. Foundation has been extremely generous to this organization. The Weiler yeah. family. The Weiler family, um, Lester Abeloff, um, mm -hmm. and I, I don't want to Same start to name, yeah, yeah, no. name names, but yeah. we, we've gotten a lot of help, and we, you know, we, we, if anybody wants to help us out, we certainly could use all the help we could yeah. get. Do you have a, a, a website that where they can go to to make donations, or we well. Um, we're not that high tech yet, but mm -hmm. we do have a website. They can go there and get the information on where to send donations okay. and informa more information about the Gatsby Gala and, mm -hmm. and our programs. And it's www.devedmc, devedmc, Monroe County, dot org, o -R -G. We're going to also scroll that on the screen also, Great. so just to make... Great. But I, I, I th I'm going to be at the gala. I know that the gala was great. We I, it yeah. was so great. much fun with that. Oh, oh my gosh. gosh. The yeah. Riverside yeah. Rhythm yeah. comes. The music is all 1920s, and we have dancers out Candle there that just. Time. I'm just worried about the weather. Every time you seem to have that gala. It was candlelight. It was beautiful, though. You couldn't have recreated the you know, 20s <laughs> the any better. One, it was the beautiful. last one you had where. Um, I, I turned around because I heard a couple of trees were down and this and that. And then she calls me and says, you better come down here. I says, I says there's a tree down. But, <laughs> but it was beautiful. It was yeah. by candlelight. It was, uh, you couldn't right. have recreated it. it, was, if, it was the so electricity nice. was out. I yeah. mean, it was Orchestra. truly a dark, speakeasy mm -hmm. kind of atmosphere. Nice. And we are going to, rec well, not the snowstorm, but the rest <laughs> of it we t intend to recreate. We and a good fundraising effort. If we get another snowstorm from now on, we'll do it in July. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> yep, absolutely. Well, you know, first I, I want to thank Repres <coughs> Representative Brown for joining me. Uh, thank you. We haven't done a show you. together in a while, but uh, thank you. <laughs> and, thank you. Um, and Jim and Sue, thank you uh, for thank having you. this visit. Uh, thank you, too. Um, looking forward to seeing this place grow. I know there's another building over there that we could probably renovate and grow. Yes. Right. As she was saying that, I'm looking at that building. I said, "Am I right?" Yes. That, that, yes. Because this, the, you know, you, you, mm -hmm. so hopefully the folks out there that see the show could realize the importance of the, what you do here in the community and, and help you out. And uh, we want to thank you so much for taking the time to come down and spend the, the afternoon with us. We really appreciate thank it and helping us get the word out to the residents of the county. Thank you very much. Thank you. 
You've been watching Legislative Report. I'm State Representative Mario Scavello, joined with Representative Rosemary Brown. If you have any questions about the show that you've just seen, the information will be on our screen in a moment. So see you next time for Legislative Report.